Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today I'll be presenting the case of an 18-year-old male who presented to ER with complaints of uh, breathlessness, low-grade fever and rhinitis. Patient uh, on initial 10-second assessment, patient was conscious, oriented and uh, was speaking, able to speak in full sentences. Airway was patent, uh, no secretions or gurgling of sounds, breathing-wise, bilateral air entry was equal and also respiratory rate was 20 per minute with saturation of 88% on room air. At this point of time, uh, we had started the patient on uh, face O2 uh, by face mask and uh, circulation wise BP was 114 bar 80. How much uh, we have started? We have started on uh, 5 liters of food. And circulation wise uh, BP was 114 bar 80 millimeters of mercury and uh, pulse rate was uh, 56 per minute. Disability wise GCS of E4, V5, M6 and pupils are 2 mm equivalent reacting to light. Exposure wise uh, the temperature was 98.6 degree Fahrenheit and um, at this point of time again we had reassessed uh, the saturation it was uh, early increased to 92 percentage. Okay. Increased it up to 10 liters. Adjuncts to primary survey uh, we uh, took an ECG which showed a sinus uh, bradycardia only and ABG was showing a pH of 7.441. PCO2 of 39.4, PO2 of 290 and uh, SO2 so in ABG was showing us 98.3 okay. and met hemoglobin uh, levels uh, we had seen it showed 23.3 uh, percentage and uh, the bicarb levels are 26.4 and there was also question mark in all of the values okay. and uh, coming to the secondary survey Normal ABG machines will not show methemoglobin level, levels. but we have uh, that shows methemoglobin level. Uh, coming to this uh, secondary survey, uh, patient is an 18 year old male who had initially complaints of fever with uh, low grade fever with rhinitis uh, 5 days back and uh, he went to uh, uh, and the next day he had developed acute onset worsening of breathlessness and he was admitted in outside hospital. There he had uh, desaturation and uh, bradycardia and all was present and he was treated with uh, antibiotics, uh, nebulization and NIV. Progressively his breathlessness improved uh, but his saturation was always uh, not improving and uh, always uh, uh, being on the lower side around 90 percent and also met hemoglobin levels uh, outside also was raised. So they referred him for further management and uh, he uh, there was no any other history of any uh, intake of uh, any new drugs before the uh, event. Or Why these new drugs are important? In suspected methemoglobinemia, why new drugs are uh, We will have to see if a patient has taken any uh, history of any new drugs like uh, nitroprusside, nitrites, nitroglycerin uh, or uh, drugs like uh, metoclopramide, uh, phenazopyridine, okay. uh, dapsone. Uh, for, uh, or any anti-malarials also has to be checked. Uh, then other uh, dye, salt, dye history also has to be checked or any food preservative history. Cly uh, dyes like chlorates, uh, uh, then uh, we have nitrobenzene, like that dyes also has to be checked. Then herbicide, pesticide components also there. Uh, and also uh, the patient does not complain of any other uh, symptoms such as uh, chest pain, uh, abdominal pain, vomiting, giddiness or syncope or altered mental status. Uh, patient there are common problems of uh, high methemoglobin level in your body? High methemoglobin in your based on the percentage levels itself, we have different symptoms. Uh, if it is uh, less than 3 percent, not much symptoms will be there. 3 to uh, 15 percent, there might be a grayish uh, discoloration uh, only. And uh, with 15 to 30 percent, the, the blood can be uh, chocolate brown in color and uh, cyanosis can also occur. Cyanosis is okay, a, but what is the problem? Uh, and if it increases more than that, then patient will start to have headache, lethargy. Why uh, they, all these things happen? Uh, because of the yeah. hypoxemia, the, uh, the uh, blood HB, the hemoglobin is not able to deliver the oxygen to the tissue. Hemoglobin tissues. is full of uh, yeah, having oxygen. Is, uh, it they is high affinity, high affinity, high, high affinity for oxygen, but they are not able to uh, sh uh, release deliver. the oxygen at the tissue level because of the leftward shift of the okay. oxyhemoglobin so dissociation curve. Oxygenation <laughs> is very high in the blood, but that is not delivered to the tissues. That is a problem. Yeah. So, you will not, uh, ABG wise, uh, you will not see any hypoxemia. Mm -hmm. It will be all, all right or sometimes it will be more like your patient yeah. when you give oxygen. Okay. But patient is not getting oxygen. 
is basically a tissue level hypoxia or we call it as a functional anemia hmm. and uh, and uh, further uh, patient uh, was not on any medications only a past history of a reactive airway disease is present and uh, coming to clinical examination wise uh, there the, the, there was no any uh, pararictal cyanosis sino, uh, was very minimally seen on the nail bed sole okay apart from that there was no any obvious cyanosis seen and uh, no any lymphadenopathy or pedal edema uh, chest wise patients uh, uh, bilateral air entry was equal no added sounds were present uh, cvs wise also as one as was no murmurs uh, was present uh, gat abdomen was soft and non tender uh, cns wise gss was uh, 15 out of 15 with no focal neurology deficits then uh, we are gone uh, ahead with uh, the routine blood investigations in that uh, the uh, hb was shown as 18.9 a polycythemia okay. uh, was seen which can be due to maybe the uh, chronic uh, component of uh, the methemoglobin of the patient what uh, is the reason for polycythemia here initially the patient will be having functional anemia since the uh, the tissue level the uh, body is not get, uh, delivering the oxygen as a compensatory mechanism uh, the body starts to increase the production of uh, rbcs who 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 gives the order to produce more rbcs in your body this is called a right. secondary polycythemia what is the mechanism behind that if you un- once you understand that there will not be any confusion whether it is hypoxemia the water may be the reason it can be high altitude copd methemoglobinia chronic hypoxemia hemoglobin will be naturally high what is the reason hmm? erythropoietin erythropoietin. Release, uh, so more erythropoietin is released from the kidney kidneys. because of kidney detect the hypoxemia more erythropoietin is produced more hemoglobin will be formed okay that's a natural mechanism of our body so that's why he is having secondary polycythemia mm. here a uh, patient uh, had initially a uh, counts was very minimal 15.6 uh, total counts uh, and uh, crp was negative and platelets 3.04 uh, all other parameters were within normal limits mm. we had also uh, sent for uh, g6pd level and cytochrome b5 reductase level also okay what what is the importance of g6pd level in this patient uh, yeah, patient they if, if we suspect yes, we are suspecting a chronic component of this methemoglobinemia so if the patient is having g6pd deficiency uh, the uh, patient will not be able to produce nadph okay so if there is no nadph production uh, then uh, there won't be further reduction of the uh, methemoglobin to the normal uh, hemoglobin which is uh, mainly uh, the normal hemoglobin is fe2 plus so and uh, the methemoglobin is fe3 plus so the oxidation is what makes it to methemoglobin it has to be reduced further to make it uh, back to fe2 plus so that is mainly done via uh, the nadph mechanism nadph methemoglobin reductase enzyme reduces nadph to nadp and this further reduces methemoglobin to hemoglobin so the Uh, G6PD is also uh, what fuels the NADPH to NADPH uh, reduction. One That more reason happen. is there. One more reason is there why we do G6PD levels. One is uh, like you told, it can aggravate the problem. Second one is, the second one is related to your treatment. Uh, we can give methylene blue only if uh, there is no G6PD okay. deficiency. There is, G6PD, there is no use. G6PD deficiency is already there, pre-existing G6PD. When you are trying to give methylene blue, it can... aggravate the problem hemolysis. by producing hemolysis. hemolysis so both ways uh, this investigation is very important okay and uh, further uh, also the uh, this enzyme also is uh, important uh, the cytochrome b5 reductase mm. enzyme it also converts the nadh to nad okay so then that way also it can uh, it reduce the uh, methemoglobin to okay. then uh, further we are also uh, done what is saturation gap saturation gap in in this uh, we can see the pao2 is on the normal side whereas the uh, saturation of the patient is persistently at 92 levels uh, so that gap the patient will be breathless with cyanosis saturation will be 90 or 92 <coughs> but abg shows normal pa normal or high like your patient uh, high here because of we supply oxygen, oxygen okay. uh, high pa2 so that gap is called mm-hmm. a saturation when yeah. you see a patient like that we have to think about methemoglobinemia some of the newer missions abg itself abg mission itself that will pick the uh, methemoglobin levels and uh, also the uh, pulse oximetry uh, mainly the co oximeters are used uh, okay. for uh, identifying the methemoglobin as it can uh, detect uh, different wavelengths uh, okay. our normal pulse oximeter only has two wavelengths detection so the different wavelengths are we have to also uh, that is mainly via the spectro okay. uh, metry uh, mechanism 
sector photometry mechanism. Then we are also done uh, echo for the patient uh, to rule out any uh, heart diseases, uh, congenital heart diseases, anything the patient had because the patient had also given a history of uh, uh, during birth, uh, mother gives history of a cyanosis history was there and uh, shortness of breath after childbirth. Okay. So we had done also an echo. What are the two out. types of methemoglobinemia? We can, it can be either congenital uh, methemoglobinemia or it can be acquired. acquired. Uh, uh, in uh, congenital, uh, it is uh, because of the uh, reduction, uh, <coughs> the, the uh, reduction in the conversion of the uh, methemoglobin to uh, the ferric, uh, ferrous hemoglobin. And uh, also in acquired causes, as you said, the drugs uh, can cause uh, mainly. Okay. So this is a, a congenital but aggravated by the aggravated by uh, infection. infection, pneumonia, alert, uh, okay. is infection is an aggravatory factor. Yeah. Cardiac failure can also get aggravated. What is the treatment? A treatment uh, ideally, if the patient, uh, uh, if it is uh, the based on the levels, we give the treatment. So we have, we have started oxygen. Is that going to help the patient? No, it, we have slowly <coughs> then tapered off the oxygen. Normally, oxygen is not going to not help the patient, but we can only give it. Uh, like uh, just to see whether patient improves or not. The, the, there may be some other reason also along with methemoglobin that may be corrected, not methemoglobin. And uh, we can initially based on the levels, uh, if you are not suspecting a congenital problem, uh, if the levels are less than 25 percentage with symptoms like uh, any abnormal vital signs, uh, tachypnea, hypoxia like that symptoms or any end organ uh, dysfunctions uh, like uh, any altered mental status, seizures, uh, and all cardiac arrhythmias occurring, then we have to start them uh, immediately on uh, methylene blue. Okay. Methylene blue, uh, we have to give 1 to 2 mg per kg IV over uh, 5 minutes. Uh, if, if, they, if we see mild, my, minimal symptoms and all, milder symptoms, then we can give it as 60 mg or IV infusion can be given. Uh, and uh, 3 to 4 times per day we can give the infusion. Then uh, after that, uh, if the patient uh, has more than 25 percent methylene, methylene blue, blue what are the adverse effects adverse effects uh, it can uh, the ingestion it will be painful mm. uh, then uh, it can as in gcp deficiency it can cause hemolysis, can hemolysis. Uh, then uh, color of the, the color skin, body, yeah, body, skin body will color will change blue to color. blue that is a problem okay it will not disappear fast because some patients with hypotension will remain uh, there for a longer period and then uh, if the patient uh, he has uh, uh, if more than 25 percentage levels also will, without symptoms itself we can start methylene blue. Okay. Then uh, if the patient uh, does not improve that we can also give riboflavin. Vitamin B2 can also be given. Okay. Uh, same mechanism, shuttle mechanism. And uh, then uh, methylene blue basically acts as a cofactor for that NADPS to NADP conversion. So in that way it facilitates. Vitamin C. Vitamin C, uh, we use mainly in such congenital conditions. Uh, it uh, actually um, itself acts as a, a reducing agent and uh, we can give in doses around 300 to 1000 mg. Uh, we can give in uh, divided doses. Uh, if the patient day. does not respond to your all your treatment, then what do you do? If the severe conditions and all, we can uh, give exchange transfusions exchange. can be done uh, or we can give hyperbaric oxygen. Okay. That we can give. Okay. Hyperbaric oxygen also it is not going to work because the delivery is the problem, mm -hmm. not the uh, intake. Oxygen is taken by the RBC, Del it is not delivered. Mm -hmm. so, whichever it's oxygen you, if you give also, it is not going to deliver. So, exchange transfusion may be helpful in uh, severe conditions. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Mm -hmm. The most important thing is saturation gap, that is the only thing we will get a clue to make a diagnosis. Unusual patient with breathlessness, cyanosis, uh, low saturation, but ABG is normal. Then you have to suspect methemoglobinemia. Okay. Only thing is in emergency room, we have to avoid certain medication for this type of patients. That should not be given, like especially metaclopramide. Metaclopramide. That is the most important thing we use. Yes. In, um, other drugs are all in like uh, nitrates and nitroglycerin. All these things are started in a patient who is dying coronary artery disease or something like that. But uh, metoclopramide we use in lot of in patients. Lot. We have to be very careful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.